Greetings everyone, Osiye here. I am thrilled to introduce what could arguably be hailed as the most advanced home theater calibration automation ever. I proudly present to you Odyssey One. It's a revolutionary script that works right in your web browser, making it platform and installation free, and with just a few clicks, redefines what's possible with Odyssey, unlocking the full potential of your home cinema audio. Thanks to John Mulcahy's brilliant work integrating application programming interface into the Room EQ Wizard's latest beta, the dream of automated REW-powered Odyssey is now a reality. By combining remarkable capabilities of RAW with behind-the-scenes computational processes, Odyssey One takes room correction to unprecedented levels in an extremely easy and streamlined way. The improvements may well blow you away, so I have included some Dolby Atmos and DTSX test clips playable from a USB key in your Blu-ray player. Click the link at the top right corner now to download them while you're watching this video. Odyssey One isn't just about convenience. Yes, it completely automates the calibration process, but the precision it brings is also unmatched with several never-before-seen novel techniques and advanced calculations. Individual speaker measurements undergo meticulous time alignment and vector averaging to ensure the most accurate representation of sound at the prime listening position compensated for the speed of sound setting of your specific receiver model. Speaker volume alignment surpasses even the standard capabilities of REV, offering accuracy to an impressive 10 decimal points. This technique alone brings the unique characteristics of your speakers out, resulting in a more natural sound reproduction. It deals with Odyssey's speaker spacing limitations to align your subwoofer delay using multiple methods until it gets your bass perfectly dialed in. Subwoofer volume determination process is also unique and quite sophisticated, warranting the subwoofer working in its ideal comfort zone, ensuring seamless integration. Besides, it correctly applies these optimal distance and trim settings to multiple subwoofers automatically. Convolution filters which fully replace original Odyssey filters through a hack in the app are generated by inverting each speaker's steady state minimum phase response over Dr. Floyd Tool's scientifically validated target curve utilizing a five-stage process that implements the most recent improvements in REW inversion arithmetic, hence the need for Beta 18. Expect nothing short of extreme accuracy and breathtaking clarity. In the end, crossover frequencies become quite clearly visible thanks to robust speaker volume leveling but of course, Odyssey One automates that process as well with a flawless method which took me a good part of a week to develop. Alright, theory is great, but let's see this thing in action, shall we? We'll geek out on the technical details after. Let me first start the script. This is the whole program, 39 kilobytes, and opens with Google Chrome or Safari or Firefox. The instructions are short, only 10 of them, and that's basically all you need to know. Download the latest Rev Beta 18 or above. I provided the download link here already if you don't have it. Here you can download it for Mac, Windows and Linux as you wish. Remove any existing microphone calibration file from REW. This is quite important because then every imported measurement will be added with this calibration. So make sure you don't have any calibration file here. I don't, but still you can also just delete them. And set REW's maximum measurements to 300. You go to view and here maximum measurements that limit used to be 199 now it's 300 in the new beta you won't need 300 measurements but you can easily get in excess of 150 with a 916 atmos system the script is deleting the measurements that it's not using but it has no harm to your computer so better keep it at 300 this requires a restart the first time you do it which is also noted here and click upload button select an odyssey calibration file now let's First, try a or a 3D one, and here it prompts you with the Doctor Tool target curve. This is embedded in the program. You have to save this to somewhere in your computer. Uh, let me save it to desktop. And also, it already downloaded the measurements from the ADY file, so you have to click hello here, and also save them wherever you want. Again, to desktop. These are all the measurements converted from the ADY file, Odyssey calibration file, to where Rev compatible form. Now open the zip file and just select all these files. You can select them one by one or just press Ctrl and A key on Windows or Command and A key on Mac and then click them and drop them onto Rev. And you can even close them afterwards. And make sure Rev is not in all LSP, but SPL and face step. Look, the speed is so much faster even for importing compared to this step versus this step. So make sure when the script is working, REW is always kept at SPLM phase step. It not only slows things down, it may cause problems. And now the program is still not gonna work because it's gonna check for whether the target curve is uploaded to REW or not. For that, you go to EQ tab and target settings, and here you have to see a house curve. None is not good. So you go to desktop where you save this file, Dr. Tooltest and just upload it. Do not try to upload your own house curves here, guys. I mean, for two reasons. First, this house curve is excellent for 75 dB where 
Odyssey is measuring every speaker. It's uh, scientifically tested and the crossover frequency determination process makes use of very sophisticated algorithms based on this curve. So if you change this, it won't get your crossover frequencies right. And this has enough base for the Harman Kardon lovers out there. And what else? Navigate the Q-Tab. And here the instructions we just did are written. No need to extract the file. It'll be automatic. Yeah, all these measurements will be correctly imported in order. The new REW source them alphabetically. So C, center speaker is always at the top, which is also important because it bases all the speaker distance measurements on the C speaker. And the indices should be sorted. Speakers should be grouped under the same name. Actually, this is the default import. Unless you play with them, delete some of them or change their sorting like this, then you won't have any errors. Otherwise, the program will warn you that measurements don't match. Animate measurement list, yes, this might slow things down. So untick this one. And this is all the settings you ever need. Try to keep analysis intact as default rev settings because these window settings is important. We will do a lot of inversion and that's all. At that stage, you're done and you click start optimization. And here it goes. Now cross correlation aligning every measurement to MLP and then vector averaging them. Now deleting the measurements that it no longer needs. And here is a log that, that tells you what is doing when. There were 112 measurements. Now they are all averaged with origin in this here. And all the target volume levels have already been calculated. All distances are out. Okay, here calculated optimal this subwoofer distance of 16.42 meters exceeds the re receiver's max speaker spacing limit, which is 15.06 meters versus 15.07. So attempting to realign the sub. Recalculating subwoofer distance of 7.54 meters still exceeds the receiver's max. Anyway, now it's finished, by the way. That's all it takes. And you just save this ADY file wherever you want, transfer it to your multi queue editor app, and transfer it to your AVR, and you're done. Your Odyssey calibration is optimized already within seconds. And I was reading this part, so subwoofer distance is again reset at 4.02 meters and it's finally within the receiver speaker spacing limits. Okay, the speaker spacing limits with multiple subwoofers is a bit different. This also takes care of that. And these are the crossovers that it determined. Pretty solid. And if you want to see what it did, let's just raise size such that speakers align with each other yeah this is good no clear selection so these are the final after correction speaker response results as you can see you can clearly see the crossover frequencies of group of speakers this guy has larger fronts and two different speakers and some surround speakers all the same so look at the crossover levels and this is because the volume level is calibrated perfectly okay these are one 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 octave band smoothed but even if you unsmooth all of them this line here is still flat as you see and this is dr tool's curve so this is the calibration that this one achieves look at these graphs and responses what else can i say and the filters which have the names of the speakers so that they match correctly in the calibration file if you look at them they are quite <coughs> complicated, but none of them exceeds 20 dB because it's the Odyssey limit. Odyssey will cap if anything goes beyond that. And they are pretty powerful filters. Now, maybe in the JSON file, I mean, this is already finished. All it will take you is one minute. But where is this one? Is the optimized one, right? Yeah. Dynamic EQ off, dynamic volume off. And uh, it puts target curve one. This is high frequency roll of one. Even if you select two, it's gonna switch to one because it has filters of 3,283 points, custom target curve points for every speaker except for the sub. And after 300 Hertz, it has this starting from 3000 Hertz, anti high frequency roll of addition to every filter. You won't see it here, but it's added automatically to the ADY file. And the subwoofer gets a bit less and it doesn't get this anti roll off, obviously, and it cuts at 250. All speaker levels distances are, as found out in Rev, adjusted. Mid range compensation 
for speakers is turned off. Custom speaker type, custom crossover. And here, custom and speaker connect are correctly assigned. And if you had trimmed down, because I have seen it happen in many ADY files, the frequency roll of range, if you have curtained it, it will bring it back to 20,250 for subwoofer. This is basically all the settings it's going to touch in a single subwoofer file. You're still advised to use the original Odyssey calibration file before you fiddle with it for safety, but it will take care of everything that it needs to. Um, 300 meter per second limit was also taken care of. As you see, the first speed of sound has been automatically set to 343 for your AV receiver model, then on AVC 8500H. And if you think this setting is incorrect, please notify me. You can write into comments. I mean, at the moment, there's a list of, let me, how can I show it to you? Maybe like this. Yeah. There is a list here of all the models that I know to have 300 meters per second speed limit. So if yours is not here, add to this list. And also please inform me so we can update this as quick as possible with all the correct model names. It doesn't make an audible difference anyway because the program is using time rather than distance. And in fact, 300 meters per second, in my opinion, was, I mean, then and Marans came up with this idea to be able to apply at least a maximum of 20 millisecond delay to subwoofer. Now that people figured it out and they had to take it back to 343, our new maximum delay limit is 17.5 milliseconds. So maybe we didn't really earn anything by getting the speed of sound right in these machines. That's all. This script actually can run up to two times faster than this, but I slowed it down. Better safe than sorry. This uh, fetch APIs is a work in progress. And I mean, I did my best to safely fetch every data. But if you do it too quickly, some calculations look like they have been done correctly, but they might not. And don't trust my programming too much. So better keep it slow, at least until you familiarize yourself with it. And the technique, how it calculates the filters, you will see that Dr. Tool's curve even has a phase response. So it's minimum phase of the curve inverted over minimum phase response of the speaker. And then the vision, the inversion, we, you take the minimum phase of it to avoid any pre echo. And this is how the filter is produced. This gives the highest clarity by a margin. I only use it in my stereo system and no one is aware of this technique so far. So you will like what you hear, I guess. And the easy part of this is you can try this within minutes and you will understand whether you like it or not very quickly. Dynamic EQ should be off since measurements were taken with it disabled during Odyssey calibration, but you will not need it as much with this calibration as bass will be balanced and anti-high frequency roll-off filtering applied to each speaker keeps the treble level with the rest, so you will not need dynamic EQ as much for sure. Use the latest multi-EQ editor app version 11.1 I think. Not that they, it will make a difference, but they make small changes from version to version. And let me know if any version of the app has problems with this script. So I will update the program. There is room for improvement in multiple sub performance by using your own measurements instead of Odyssey's because we have to stick with Odyssey's time alignment between the two or three subs. Actually, let's have one more. You just simply reload this and delete all the measurements from REW. Now let's upload another ADY file. Thanks to the subscribers. I'm not short of ADY files, as you can see. Uh, where is this three sub over one? Okay, now upload the ADY file. I'm not gonna save the target curve again, it's already there. Um, we have to allow this. Measurements already taken. Open it, Control A, and drop it onto row. And close. So 96 measurements. Stop optimization. Speed of sound set. Applying target curve. Optimization started, transposing measurements from eight different microphone positions, cleaning up processed measurements. I'm not sure if you can read them, so I'm reading them. Calculating precise speaker volume, this distances, everything. Subwoofer again, three times had to be reset, finally at 1.95 meters. This is when uh, aligning IR delays, and it is actually not an optimal way of subwoofer aligning. It's what Odyssey does actually. So if your subwoofer has these delays, take care of them first. And it's done, finished. Now here, again, 
as you see it's three subwoofers this guy the new machine Maran Cinema 50 and here you will see that the maximum distance limit is dropped down to 4.02 meters instead of six reason being because Odyssey when adjusting these subwoofers between each other which you cannot change I mean you can randomly change of course but you, the response that you receive here for subwoofer will not be correct because it's the total response of the, these three subwoofers measured by Odyssey and you will see that there is a trim adjustment on each subwoofer this one is minus 1.5 this one is 0 0.5 and there is a delay adjustment 0 for this one 1.98 for this one and 0 0.33 for this one this is the time alignment between the subs determined by Odyssey and here the maximum distance is already 1.98 so it's about 2 meters already gone so you're left with 4.02 meters for this alignment here and this algorithm also takes care of that obviously you have even less space now here so that's why it had to when when it found 5.1 meters it was smaller than 6 and this is the distance between the nearest speaker and the subwoofer by the way here it is for example this TRR 1.95 meters plus 4.02 should be whatever the sub is set at so it it 7.05 would normally be okay if this wasn't a three subwoofer system so this is how it calculates and all this and if crossovers for uh, when there is a huge dip here front right speaker front left is at 80 but front right is 150 which is illogical obviously the reason being let's check and we will see a huge dip in front right speaker and the algorithm rightly decided it should be crossed over there with the subwoofer because there's a major dip fr final and fl final and dr tool okay it's very hard to find like this and this is the target curve yeah because fr has this dip here it's thinking that it is having a, it needs a crossover here because there is too much this dip is 2 db and i could have fixed that kind of thing but luckily the app when the, a pair of speakers has different crossover rates it automatically sets the lower rate for both of them so you don't have to deal with this but just know that one of the pairs is different largely different than the other it is because you have a dip there you should be taking care of the placement of your speakers your, your front left and right here with this guy are not placed symmetrical and front right has major dips that front left doesn't that's all this one in a nutshell leave any questions in the comments below and enjoy your calibration see you in the next video